the only thing I've gone to the public hearing. I was going to skip the uh, planning zone report for a minute going to the public hearing. Okay. Okay. The fix of going to the public hearing, the planning zone on River Road. <coughs> Basically, we have a, a rezoning request that was approved by uh, Planning and Zoning, and they sent it here for the public hearing. And it is a rezoning of a 10 acre, 10 acre parcel in Section 13, Township 7, uh, South, Range 5 West, basically Carabelle Mill Road. They want to go from R1, which is now single family residential, to R2, single family mobile home. Uh, is there Aaron? Yeah, I thought I saw him earlier. Was the gentleman that was applying for? I thought I did. Maybe not. Yeah. Okay. And so now I will say, uh, in your iPad, I have scanned all the um, comments, uh, objections to this project, and I have some more. I'm, I, and I can't say that these are different from the ones I scanned for you, or they're the same. That I, I brought know. them in this morning. That I'm not for sure. Uh, it's the same people signed them, you know, I'm not for sure. Yeah, so there are quite a few um, objections, so I guess we could, uh, you open the floor for public comments for or against well, this Where's project? the fellow who wanted it done? We have a few more to add to that. Okay. okay. He's already doing well, okay. <laughs> I think there was around 40 in this field. I think I brought about 40 in, wasn't it, Michael? Yeah, we had about 40, and then this will probably make it close to 50. Okay, I brought about, yeah, Mr. Cook gave me about 40, I think, yesterday. So, uh, basically, just for reference purposes, this is what I can. Okay. Okay. So, this point, I that's up to the board and the chairman. I mean, we certainly can. I mean, we've, we've actually started doing that uh, in, in considering ordinances and not opening up the floor for public comment. But is the applicant here or not here? Not I guess I'll just ask public. Is anyone here to represent the applicant? No, but I am out of the property at 438. I want to know what's going on. I, I'm sorry. I don't want my property to be zoned. Why Wait. is he listing my property to be zoned? I think your property is re, re, uh, in the zone that's back, back behind you. He is, yeah. My property is the front piece. Are you the one who just opened up the drainage, uh, just put the new culvert in? Yes, sir. Okay. It's I back, back be, behind you. Yeah, I, but he's got, I saw the, the thing that y'all had posted on the side of the road. Hold on. Come up to the mic right here and, and speak your name. Yes, sir. My name's Robbie Chapman, and I own that property that stretches across the front. And my questions are, when we went in and there was a sign at the side of the road, and I've got this paperwork that I was sent, I guess, by y'all, he's wanting to rezone both pieces of property, the 438 and the other one, because it's listed. No, he just wants to do the 10 acres. Is this your property? No, but that's not what I got in the mail. Okay, but when you, if you go on the side of the road, he's got a sign set out there, and it's showing both pieces of property. So he's only zoning the one, rezoning one piece. The 10 acres. The 10 acres. Is this, this okay. No, he's trying to rezone. You're not rezoning. We're going to try to. Is this, is this your property? <laughs> Mine's in front of his right here. I cut him off from the rest of it. Okay. And that was, a, that, that was the question I was asking is, why would I want him to rezone that property? That's just going to make my property worth less. You sat right there and you have your time to speak on it. <laughs> well, I just was curious. Yeah, Mr. Okay. Chairman, just for the record, uh, Michael Schuler, County Attorney, I, I spoke with Mr. Chapman. He was just uh, at the podium and showed him the diagram of the 10 acre parcel that is being mm -hmm. uh, considered by the board for rezoning. And the, the uh, parcel on your map highlighted in red is not his property. His property abuts that between Mill Road and the parcel that you're considering. Yeah, I was out there at 6.30 okay. this morning and looked at it. So it is not his property. That is correct. Okay. Can, I, can I say something? I had a question about this to start with. Thank you, Mr. Noah. Um, I had a question 
for this. I mean, as you all know, I have got the longest tenure up here, um, and I remember this. Um, <coughs> in 2006, they made a request to rezone it from I-1 to R-1. The reason why it was 2R-1 is because the people out there in that area, the same people sitting in here now, minus some people, objected to the R-2 zoning and allowed one, allow only R-1. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to be in favor of it being R-2. I'll tell you right off the bat. And that's the reason why is because the people objected to it in 2006. Ain't no need to, ain't no need to clap. I'm doing my job. In 2006, the people objected to it then. They still objecting to it now. And I know this is a public hearing and you can allow public comment, but we've got all their public comment by them signing the petition and writing the letters, right? Yes, ma'am. So I'm going to cut to the chase. And if anybody else wants to talk, that's fine. But I'm ready to make a motion, unless y'all want to get up and say something. All right, let's just do the motion first if you want to speak. Let me get the law on it. Well, I'm curious where the applicant is at this point. Is well, it don't it? matter. He knew, he knew it was this day. No, no, I understand. I just want to, for the record, yeah. to make sure he's had an adequate opportunity to come Probably. in this case. He's here in his 10, uh, yeah. I, I mean, he, he'd been notified, right, Mr. Sheila? To my right, knowledge, Mr. yes, yes. Okay, he's been notified. Properly notified? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Uh, ask if anybody wants to speak. Anybody <laughs> want to speak then? Before we do the motion? If not, Mr. Chairman, I enter a motion that we deny this request. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion second on the floor. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed? Motion carried. Won't be resigned. <laughs> We're going to take a five minute recess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. The Board of County Commissioner are now back in session. We're going to start with a planning and zoning report. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. Uh, I have three uh, docs, basically, critical shoreline applications. Uh, and we have, can make it a little smaller there, and one uh, reconfiguration application. So the first doc, consideration of a request, it was unanimously approved. Recommended, I should say, I'm sorry, consideration of a request to construct a single family private dock at 959 New River Harbor Road, Lot 4, New River Harbor, in Carbell, Florida, Franklin County. They have all their state and federal permits and they meet local requirements. The walkway will be about, it will be a 20 by 4 with an 8 by 30 terminal platform and a 12 by 20 uncovered boat lift. Request submitted by James and Martha Barnett, the agent David Keith, Docks for Less. That's in my district, and now so moved. Second, second. <laughs> yeah, I, I got a question to ask though. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the the and boat lift is uncovered though. Yes, it is an uncovered boat lift. Yes. Okay, because you know we had some problems out there before. Yes, sir. Yes, the yes, other yes, one. Yes, I just want to make sure. Okay. Okay. And commission, I brought Amy because I wasn't at that particular okay. meeting, so that's why she's. All right, you got a motion and second. All right, I have a motion second on the floor. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Our second application was also uh, 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 unanimously approved. I mean recommended, I keep saying that. It's a consideration of request to construct a single family private dock at 2215 Conk Drive, lot 10 and 11, Oyster Bay Village on St. George Island. It has all, they have their state and federal permits and they meet the local requirements. The walkway is 480 by four with a 20 by eight a terminal platform with two. 12 by 20 uncovered boat lifts. It's submitted by GEA, agent for Nancy Janot, applicant. And they have an existing house on site. Move approved. Yes, sir. Second. Have a motion second the floor. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed? Motion carries. Another recommended approval is a consideration of a request to construct a single family private dock extension on lot 76, Holiday Beach, unit 182 Fiesta Drive. That's an alligator point. They have their state and federal permits. They meet their local requirements. The dock will extend 40 by four and move the boat lift to the end of the dock. Okay, I need to ask a question. Um, Amy, 
This is in the canal over there off of uh, Fiesta Drive. Okay, this is, I mean, this is no lo longer than the other docks in that area. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to second on the floor. All in favor? Aye. Uh, all opposed? Motion carries. Okay, finally, the final item is, uh, which is also uh, recommended, consideration of a request to reconfigure the lot lines. And there's a drawing that is in your packet. At 1533 Alligator Drive, an Alligator Point, the line between Lot 4, Block M, Unit 3, Peninsula Point, and the east half of Lot 3, Block M, Unit 3, same point, with a less and acceptance of 2438 square foot of property from and to each property to keep, that should be the, the east half of lot three, block M unit three, buildable lot of record. Okay, okay. I didn't read that right, I'm sorry. Um, I'll let Amy explain that one. That's, it needs to be explained. Yeah. Sure. Basically what they're doing is I, I, I conferred with Mark um, Turrington, um and he stated that, you know, in order to keep lot three, um, the east half of lot three, a buildable lot, they had to have the equal size amount of property um, that they, that was existing. If they didn't have the same square footage or the same equal or more square footage to keep that, you know, um, then they would have to, um, draw the lot lines. Well, is there a reason why we're doing, what is the reason why we're, they're requesting us to do this? Because I they're, think they're selling a, off the property on the east half of, they're selling the it off? Of lot three. Yes, ma'am. They're selling that house. She has an existing house, her personal house on lot four. That's right. And so in order to do that, to make that a buildable lot, they had to give up some of their property and the lines Okay, does this still oh, okay. does this still meet the requirement for her land and house? Does yeah, they're still? giving up equal amounts of property. Okay. So that, the line is straight. So um, they're giving up a portion of property here and a portion of property at the Gulf side. Um, it's the same square footage. It's not very pretty, but it's okay. they call it the less than accept. Okay. Then, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I, I do not attend the PNZ meetings, but I do attend the Board of Adjustment meetings. I became aware of this at your Board of Adjustment meeting. Um, with the recommendation of planning and zoning to allow them to reconfigure the lot lines, the board allowed that to, to occur in other subdivisions throughout the county. So I, I, although it, it is a, the lines are not necessarily straight, it is consistent with the prior actions of this board. So I, I don't recommend against allowing the reconfiguration, but they do need to do a replant. I've mentioned that to the Board of Adjustment, also mentioned to staff that as part of any approval that you may give this morning would be a requirement that they, they go in and do a replant. I did speak with the applicant at the Board of Adjustment meeting and with staff afterwards, and the surveyor already has all the surveys drawn. Okay. It should not be a, a hardship financially or otherwise. It may take them a little more time maybe go to P and Z or something, but they can do this. But it would, it, in order for, for this board to legally change the lot lines in a type of subdivision, you have to, the applicant has to go through a replant. So okay. that's, that's so, been my recommendation so, to this okay. board and also I'm, the board. I'm going to do a motion to approve sub, uh, subject to uh, the attorney's replant. comment and, and, and make I, sure that they are, do, that it is documented well. With yes. And Avon. I did speak with Ms. Withers and I told her, you know, after the Board of Adjustment meeting, I told her that yes, we can probably go forward with this, but be um, be prepared to do a replant. Okay. Um, so she is on notice. Upon it would be conditioned yes. upon yeah. a replant. So I'll give her a call and let her know the next step. And she will not get her. I mean, she will not be able to do it until she does the replant. Okay. You know, uh, and, and that's my motion that we we follow the attorney's recommendation and and approval. Uh, consistent with that. Okay. And I'll, I'll, make, I'll make her aware of that. So, uh -huh. All right, I have a motion second. <clears throat> I'm for all in favor. Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed, motion carries. And one more item uh, the planning and zoning meeting that was scheduled for next Tuesday, June 14th. We have to cancel that due to lack of form. We have uh, one of the members have to attend a uh, class of some sort. So, the staff, we're trying to reschedule uh, a meeting this meeting on a date in June when all the, the members are going to be available. I understand, once again, 
Right now, we can't afford to even one not show up. We, we are at the minimum uh, amount of um, members on the, on the PNZ board. So until we get some more, this, this might happen more often. I, I, I went to let the board know. and called the June meeting off because I couldn't get any extra meetings for the month of June. Nobody could give me a, a skillet, you know, so um, I let them know that I'll be the regular meeting in July. Well, and, and, and the problem having uh, enough people to have a form, um, that's the reason why in the early days we had um, alternate to where if somebody on the board could not be there, then the alternate could fill in to make sure you had a vote. So, you know. And we can't even fill the seats. I know. I know. So all the, oh, the seats are not filled? Nope, not but all we have a filled. total of nine seats and two alternates. So we have a total of 11 positions that need to be filled. Um, we only have five. And um, we need no, mine, at least four field. more and two more alternates. Yeah, yeah mine, um, for District 2, it's filled. Can't get no, yeah, I can't get nobody who wants to do it. Mm -hmm. I will see if I can find somebody to tell us what mm -hmm. it There's some at large seats, right? They're not I will, um, district? I will check and I'll email you. Um, okay, yes. Yeah. Because uh, we're getting a lot of building and, and uh, we need to be able to yeah, process cause, Yeah, because it slows, it slows the process down. Yeah. It really does, Commissioner. And that's it. The planning is on. Thank you, Amy. Uh, I know, Mr. Chairman, you're going to go next to Mr. Pierce, who's not here and has. Uh, Mr. Marshall, you got one? Oh, that's right. I'm okay. so sorry. I'm oh, sorry, man. Alan ain't here. No, but okay. um, Brian and and Stella, they're here from Dewberry to discuss an amendment to the contract and this Gulf Environmental Benefit Fund with the board. I'm going to you. Good morning, Commissioners. I'm Stella Wilson with Dewberry and Brian Griffith here with me. Mr. Alan Pierce could not make it today, but he asked that we be here and provide a report um, update on Restore. And uh, we just have a couple of items that we wanted to discuss with you today and actually get your action on one of the items. The first item is the second addendum to the contract that Dewberry Engineers Inc. has with the Franklin County Board of Commissioners. This is a treasury requirement. Um, it's uh, just a little bit of language about um, uh, the terms in the contract that Treasury required us to provide in the contract that they felt were not already in there. So this is uh, required language by them. And I believe you all have a copy of that on your iPads. If there are any questions, we're happy to answer. But we are... Um, there are no questions we are looking for an approval on this one so that we can provide it a copy of this to the Treasury Department so that they can approve your planning assistance grant to develop the multi-year implementation plan no. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman I have uh, reviewed the proposed addendum I've made some uh, corrections to that so what was before you today I don't know if I should have that yes, sir. I'm sure it's Yes, sir. This is the addendum as I have approved it for presentation to the board. And uh, Alan and I have discussed this, and he believes that, that your action approving this today comes to you uh, with his recommendation and mine, and it is a necessary step that, that you should take today in order to keep this process moving forward so Treasury can hopefully uh, get the grant uh, approved, as she said, for your multi year implementation plan. What's the addendum, though? I'm the looking addendum, at the contract, but well, I want to know what the addendum, what the specific addendum Spe is. Specifically, uh, there was already a termination provision in the original contract, but Treasury looked at that termination provision and said that they wanted some additional language added to it to conform with certain federal circulars. And it's much easier just simply to do what Treasury has told us to do because it, it frankly, is not a material change to the, any of the terms of the contract. It's not to our detriment. Uh, and in fact, it may even clarify things a little bit better in favor of the county. Just as long as it doesn't change the terms of the contract, that I don't Term, have a problem with. The terms of service are, remain unchanged. In fact, th this would help us facilitate a termination of the agreements we needed to. So it actually works to the benefit more of the county than it does do very. So moved. Second. I have a motion to second for all in favor. 
All opposed, motion carries. Anything to do with restore, though, y'all know I'm kind of iffy about it because you got to know the information about it because everything changes so yes, quick on it. Absolutely. And, um, and I'll, so. thank you, Mr. Shooter, for letting me know that. Yes, Commissioners, if I could also point out, uh, there are no material changes to the to the contract. Uh, there are also no material changes to the scope, schedule, or structure of the the real guts of the application, and that, that was a very important feature to uh, the response from Treasury. So we're into the fine I dotting and T crossing uh, on, the, on the circulating. We did. Uh, we we it's come to our attention. It's actually come to our attention to. Uh, all of you in, in the counties in, in Florida that are participating in the Gulf Environmental Benefit Fund, uh, the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, component of the original Transocean uh, settlement. And uh, if you'll recall, the state received in the neighborhood of around $354 million, if memory serves me correctly, um, to distribute on behalf <coughs> or work with the the <clears throat> National Fish and Wildlife Foundation on behalf of the state for use of this project funds. The communication that came out on the 23rd of May uh, from the state indicates that the manner in which they're going to evaluate projects, proposals for that fund, is going to be by way of the projects in the portal, the state portal, and has pretty much put out uh, the communication that it's really time, if you will. Uh, it doesn't say that, but it's really the intent. It's time for the counties to get their respective best candidate projects in shape, uh, as again, that will be the inventory of uh, opportunities that the state will evaluate as to what the ones they put forward for that fund and, frankly, others. So uh, in speaking to Alan about that process, um, he asked for our consult uh, as to what we would advise. Uh, in, in terms of your move forward. Uh, there's a July 1 closing date uh, to get the project abstracts uh, properly constructed and placed into that portal. Uh, and then after that, they're looking for beginning 2017, the award of the projects. In the discussion, it is obviously a, uh, a process of mechanics of getting the best possible abstract and feature of the projects in shape so that they'll score well competitively against other projects that are obviously in the portal uh, from the state. And it's really a, a, a question to you all, or first off, the point, the fact that that needs to be done. Uh, second part of the consult, uh, which I had in, in conversation with Alan, was uh, and having done um, many of these grant programs across the region for over 30 years, I, I advise that uh, as you look into that structure and, and move forward, that it really isn't a process of the most projects, um, but the best projects. And because you, you really want to isolate those things that the county has very strong conviction um, to basically getting done because it will be reviewed by not only the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, but certainly the Restore Council, the NRDA process, and others. Uh, if you have one, or not one, but if you have a limited number of very convicted focus, uh, foci in, in the county about what you want to get done, you have a much higher degree of probability of success. And um, so we spoke to um, you know, several iterations of manners in which to go about getting that going, uh, not the least of which would be July 1 is not very far away. Um, so the, you know, the, uh, the getting concurrence from you as to what that limited subset of projects could and should be, and then getting the abstracts together is, is going to be a, a rapid development task um, here in, in the next few weeks. We are certainly under the contract, of which there were no material changes made to. We are in a position by task order to help you with that if that is, the, if that is your choice. Uh, if, if not, um, you'll obviously need to exercise some other 
uh, option to make sure, again, that you get the projects both identified, well-crafted, and, uh, and into the portal on time, because, again, it, has, it does have a limited um, development period. I would tell you that, uh, again, based on our consult, that these larger um, funds that are controlled by organizations such as National Fish and Wildlife or the Big Restore Council are gravitate more to regional projects projects of uh, significance and cooperation. That's what they're looking for, whether they ultimately get to that end or not, obviously, is after review. But that is what they've been pretty consistent in um, attempting to get the, the counties and, and the organizations within the counties to look at. And you have a few um, that come to mind. Um, you know, you have uh, cooperation on artificial reef uh, development that's taking place uh, both here and, and in Gulf County. Just, I'm giving you just examples. I'm not suggesting that these are your um, projects, but I just want to give you some examples. On the economic and environmental front for access, natural resource access, which these tend to really like, you have a, a bike path project um, that I know has um, been promoted here in the county as we even prepare preliminarily uh, for doing the, the MIA uh, under the direct component. Uh, you have uh, very long line extension bike path uh, proposals in Wakulla, for example, uh, Tallahassee to the sea. I may have that title wrong, uh, something to that effect. But and then you also you have uh, bike extension uh, concepts taking place in Gulf. So those are, those are just a couple of the example considerations. Again, not suggesting that those would be yours. But you have some time, but not a lot of time, to put some details behind them. I know in, in talking to Alan, uh, probably one of the featured, some of the featured projects would be your uh, channel dredge projects that have been on hold for some time. Those would be ones to get in shape. Not only characterize them properly, obviously, from the standpoint of uh, uh, boater access, but resource recovery, water quality, flow, et cetera. There's, there's a few components, scientific components in that that you'll want to make sure get featured properly in those projects again so that they will speak so well uh, for the county when they're reviewed blindly uh, by reviewers. National Fish and Wildlife reviewers probably have, you know, short of having the beautiful opportunity to vacation here, probably don't know that much about um, the um, Franklin County experience. So you'll want to make that conversation play well in the project abstract. So if you have any questions or comments. I have a question. Yes, sir. These projects, um, this money will be spent over a period of years like the other kinds? Truth, truth be told, um, the Transocean Settlement was direct to the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. And they are really in high speed um, to move their money out. Uh, they don't benefit at all from carrying it very long and uh, are actually on a five-year path um, to uh, execute the full uh, obligation expenditure of those funds. Follow up, Mr. Chairman. So this uh, application that we put in with our projects, mm -hmm. it would be two or three in number? You I, I, some people will go 23, sir. I'm just suggesting that's not the best idea. Um, you, if, you, if you really want to see, again, this is based on my experience. Uh, you want to see the projects take life they ought to be able to be tested for, again, your conviction as a commissioner or a joint board of commissioners that these are very high feature priorities for the county to get one done one way or the other. This particular fund would be a great way to obviously catalyze that. But either way, you're really putting your best, your best candidates forward as to what you want to get done. And the projects that we suggest are the projects that that we will we would anticipate getting from this this funded money. I would take it a little further than that. It, you're 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 being pressed, obviously, to have something in there by July one, because this fund is going to go looking there. I would suggest to you there are other um, restore component funds that will shop in the same place, mm -hmm. and you may you and you would likely find them to be um, evaluated and and considered. Okay, well, you said about the dredging. Yes, sir. <clears throat> that money, <clears throat> excuse me, that money can be used for the dredging? It, it, right now, the um, components of the control on those funds would not prohibit it. It would be better for it to obviously 
demonstrate it's other than just straight dredging value, uh, and you always do have those. You have you change again the flow and the, and the regime in in the areas that the dredge is going to take. Also, what you do with the dredge spoil material is going to be very important. So, you know, just a, a few features of the projects. It's got to be in by this July. It's got to be in by July one in abstract. It doesn't have to be a full project proposal. So these are abstracts in the portal. 